All right, we are now live. We will give people a little time to hop on with us, but uh, we are live. Give people another 30 seconds to show up. If they don't want, if uh, they don't show up, we'll just start without them. All right, I think that's enough time. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to our uh, youth engagement series for today. I will. I am your host, uh, Chris. Uh, and today we have a very special uh, youth engagement series for you guys. We have a, a special guest and some other guests for for, uh, for you guys to meet today. And uh, before I introduce them, I want to introduce my uh, my co-host for today, Amada. Uh, Amada, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Chris. Thanks for asking. Hope you're doing well. And I will also, before I introduce our guest speaker for today, we have uh, two Native youth from the community joining us. Um, Evelyn, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Evelyn. Hi, my name is Evelyn. I go, I'm a student of Toddy Thomas. I'm in sixth grade. I play softball and basketball. Awesome. Thank you for being here today. And Jordan, would you also like to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jordan. I'm 14, a freshman going to, or yeah, freshman going to Mac. I, and I play basketball. Awesome. Thank you for being here with us today too, Jordan. And today I'm very excited for you series. Um, she's also my cousin, which I'm really excited for, but I'm also excited just because she's paved the way for native athletes, I feel like in a way. And I will let her give herself a little introduction. Uh, Naomi Lang, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you guys so much for having me. This is super exciting. Um, as you can see, the skating rink. Um, very excited to be here to talk to everybody today about sports and um, what it takes to become an elite Olympic athlete. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Naomi Lang. Um, I was part of the 2002 Olympic team. Um, I have five national ice dance titles, uh, two four continents titles. Um, and I'm also a professional skater who has skated in shows all over the world. So I love to travel. I'm a mom of five. Yes, five children. I stay very busy all the time. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much it. I teach figure skating is my professional life right now. And I enjoy, you know, giving my insights to my own students from my, my career. So that's me. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for tuning in today and just being a part of this series and allowing us to just kind of ask questions and give the youth a little bit of insight for their athletic careers too down the road. And so I'll kind of just start us off with the first question, but I want to remind uh, viewers out there as well, we will be gathering questions um, from the live feed um, discussion forum. So if you guys want to add any questions in there, go ahead and do that. And we will be pulling them as well to be um, asked. So my first question to you, Naomi, is kind of how did you get first get into ice skating as a child? Because I know you kind of started really um, younger. Um, I mean, oh, I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, so basically it's kind of a funny story. I actually started late for most kids. I started at age eight and most kids start athletics around three, four, five years old even. Um, so I was kind of like late getting the game per se. Um, I, <laughs> the funny story is, I don't know if anybody remembers the Smurfs cartoon from like, I might be aging myself right now, but it was like a long time ago. It was a Smurfs cartoon and also a show called The Ice Capades. So my mother took me to the Ice Capades show and I sat there and even though it was Smurfs, and they were in these big blue 
costumes. I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen with people skating on ice. It's like so effortless. Um, you could tell stories. Um, it just looked really cool. And I actually got picked as a kid to go out on, they had like a little train that went around the ice. So I got to feel what it felt like to actually go around on the train and have like the wind in my hair. Um, so I was like, this is so cool. So from that point on, I was like, mom, I want to try ice skating lessons. So she basically put me in a basic skills program and I had been doing ballet since I was three years old. Um, so my balance was already pretty accurate. I could really find my coordination. So it kind of came naturally to me, even though I did start later, I, everything came a little bit faster. So that's my story of how I started skating. And I started skating in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, there really is a Kalamazoo. <laughs> Thank you for that. I didn't know. That's awesome that another sport kind of balances into another one to give you kind of a more stability and to keep going. That's awesome. And I believe Evelyn uh, has our next question for us. What did you focus on to get better at ice skating? I think for me um, to get better at skating, I would set myself goals. So even when I was little, I'd be like, okay, I want to accomplish this move in ice skating and I'm going to give myself till the end of the week to do it. So I think to keep me going, I set my goals day to day, week to week to help me pursue my bigger goals per se. I think it's super important to have goals and to be able to accomplish those goals. Um, it keeps you moving forward. Um, so you're not looking back at the negative all the time. So uh, I guess, yeah, I would say to get better, you, you have to set goals for yourself. Awesome. Thank you, Evelyn. And I think that plays to everything too, work, your life, just in all sure. aspects too. So I think that's a good um, perspective. And Jordan, I think you have the next question, bud. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> how have you maintained your worth? Uh, okay, let me start that again, sorry. Um, how have you maintained your work ethic uh, to make it so far? Um, I think, Setting a schedule for yourself um, is super important. Um, so basically I would get up, I would go to school. Um, straight after school, I'd get to the rink, I'd warm up, I'd have my on ice lessons. I then have my off ice lessons, then I would stretch, then I would go home and I'd do my homework and I'd do it all over again. Um, I think if you put yourself on a schedule, even like from day to day life, uh, it, it becomes a routine and it becomes part of your life. So you get used to it. Your body gets used to it. Um, even now, like I try to put myself on a schedule just to maintain organization <laughs> um, to get through my day. Uh, but, you know, I have to fit things in like yoga or you know, things for myself, like I have to take a jog. Um, so I think scheduling with your trainer, making sure that you're, you're always um, putting yourself things in line per se. I think that really helps me maintain um, maintain my training. Even to now, I'm 42 years old. Yes, I will say that, but I still feel like you know I have a schedule for training every day. So I think it helps in day to day life. Nice. Uh, and I kind of have a follow up to that. How uh, how hard is it keeping a schedule during this like? COVID time and this uh, time of like the pandemic? Oh, geez. Um, I kind of, not gonna lie, I went off my schedule for like a month. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I have nothing to do. Um, and it, it, I think for everybody too, it's like super confusing when you, you are like, have a re regimen of doing things, to all of a sudden have nothing to do. So I had to kind of go back after a month of taking some time off my schedule to rebuild my schedule and say, okay, I need to take my children for a walk. We need to get outside. You know, we need to, you know, have a new sort of schedule during quarantine. 
just to keep everyone busy. I think a lot of people can kind of relate to that. So in staying positive through everything <laughs> has been difficult, but um, yeah, trying to find that schedule again was a little hard, but we did it and I'm back at the rink, so. Yeah, uh, trying to find that schedule for everybody I know is very, very hard. Um, and then as a kind of a follow-up question, uh, how did you go from uh, kind of taking this as something that was fun or something that you did for like school or whatever to taking it more to that next level, to that uh, professional or maybe even the competitive level? Um, I would say probably around... 15 years old, I started noticing that I was excelling more in ice dance. We have four genres of figure skating. So we have like the freestyle aspect of the single skating. So the men's and ladies, we have pair skating, we have ice dance. Um, so I started to excel more in ice dancing um, because of my ballet background, which just kind of came a little more natural. So I decided for myself that I was gonna stop doing the other genres of figure skating and just concentrate on ice dancing. Um, I ended up finding my first partner at age 15, which is very hard to do because there aren't many male figure skaters out there to partner up with. Um, and I was fortunate enough to um, train full time at that point. So I guess I made a conscious decision that that's what I wanted to do at age 15 years old. Um, and then just my coaches and my family, you know, kind of helped me get to where I am today. So. Nice. I, I think just with, I'm kind of just going back to this whole COVID thing too. And just like, I was going, thinking of the scheduling and stuff, but I think just for, as an athlete in the routine and kind of, um, this is leading into my next question. But I'm thinking for nutrition wise, how important has it been to keep up on your nutrition as an athlete throughout your time, just going to competitive too, and just knowing how much nutrition takes a place in being an athlete? Yeah, um, nutrition is so important. Um, it not only feeds your body, but it feeds, feeds your mind, which also feeds your soul. So, you know, if you put in healthy foods to your body, you are able to perform better and have a clearer mindset to focus on your goals. Um, it's also really important to have a healthy mindset towards food. Um, you know, it's really easy to fall into the overindulgence, you know, like, oh, I'll just eat this whole king size McDonald's meal, you know, like I'm all for, you know, having breaks in healthy eating, but maybe just eat half of the meal um, and also like undernourishing yourself in figure skating we have a huge issue with people who become anorexic or bulimic even you know and it's, it's a big problem because we have such a stereotypical type of athlete in figure skating you have to be this tall thin person um very lean so sometimes that can get in your head um so I think you have to have a really healthy mindset in what you put in your body and not make it evil per se. Um, that I think that's a fight for a lot of athletes, especially in figure skating or gymnastics where we're in these tight, skimpy outfits. <laughs> so um, yes, be healthy, be mindful, make the right choices in, in healthy foods. Um, and again, I'm all for the cheat day. You know, if you accomplished your goals for the week, go have your piece of chocolate cake. Um, fine for me. Um, you gotta reward yourself. <laughs> I agree with that 110. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think too, um, we have a question from one of our uh, other youth mentors, Kiyoki. He was wondering, um, Naomi, do you have any advice for youth during this time of COVID to maintain their goals as an athlete or as a student? Yeah, I think like just going back into what I said before about really trying to make a schedule for yourself, like don't let yourself, and this goes for my 15 year old daughter too, don't let yourself sleep all day long. <laughs> um, I think she's watching right now. Don't let yourself sleep all day long. Like get up, have a routine in the morning, you know, do some exercise in the morning, get yourself awake. Um, pick your meals for the day. Uh, make sure you're setting little goals for yourself to accomplish 
throughout the week. So again, you're not sleeping all day and staying up all night. I know a lot of teams probably were doing that. And now, at least for Arizona, when school's open, they're having a really hard time getting up. So set a schedule, set some goals, accomplish the goals, and then reward yourself. That all sounds like really good advice that I wish I, I need to take a little bit of it too, because I sometimes get bombarded with stuff and I'm <laughs> push it to the other side and stuff. So thank you for that. And um, Evelyn, I think you have the next question. Who is an inspiration to you? Oh, goodness. So many people have helped me along the way. Um, let's see. I think obviously my mom, because she helped me get where I am today. She is a single mom and she works night shifts to try to pay for my skating. And I happen to pick one of the most expensive sports to be my passion, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, you know, she worked really, really hard to pay the bills to just get us through things. So I would say her work ethic probably inspired me to have a good work ethic. And I think for my children, I, I try to inspire them to have a work, good work ethic as well. So that's all stemming from my mother. Um, let's see. Growing up watching the Olympics on TV, I had some favorite skaters like Torval and Dean. Um, let's see. My Usava and Alexander Julin, Hachi Gordiev and Sergei Grinkov, Michelle Kwan. Um, I just enjoyed watching them skate so much. They inspired me to want to be like that, to have that um, level of expertise on the ice. And just, they were so solid and, and um, confident. They were just confident when I watched them. And it's funny, I look back at all those names now and I've actually been coached by one of those, two of those people. Um, and I've done skating shows with all the rest. So it's like, you watch them growing up and then all of a sudden you get to do shows with these people. I remember being so starstruck you know, people would ask for my autographs at some point, but I wanted other people's autographs. I was like, can you sell my skate, please? <laughs> so, you know, like, to be inspired by those people is pretty cool. And then to be able to work with them was great. I got to learn so many, like, lessons on how to coach from those people. Um, I learned my work ethic from those people as well. Um, so, yeah, and... As my coaches, now I can take their expertise and teach my students the same thing on how to be successful. So lots of people. <laughs> I think that's really awesome that you actually got to work with your inspirations and your mentors because some people don't necessarily get to do that or right. they kind of, so you got to see that from the ground running and then I want to do that, found it. So I think that's something to take away too, that you can do that and that is possible. So that's really cool um, connection. Yeah. And there's also another follow-up kind of for this question. How as youth mentors like Chris and myself and staff at Two Feathers working with um, native youth in particular and just youth in the community. How do you think we can support goals and schedules? Um, us like kind of coming in to implement it to them. I think just be available, you know? Um, I think youth nowadays sometimes feel a little bit secluded, um, especially now with quarantine and everything happening, like all these crazy things happening around the world um just be available for them um check in on them all the time you know like hey how are you doing today do you need help with anything can i help you set a goal can i come work out with you i don't i'm not sure um but just you know little things just to be available for the kids around you to be positive i think that's perfect and kind of what we we do that a a lot pretty much it's nice hearing other reassurances too in that way and we have some audience questions but i'm going to go ahead and let uh jordan ask his next question first what should athletes focus on to get better what should athletes focus on to get better um what should athletes focus on to get better obviously you have to focus on you know your goals um, I think focusing, but to have too much focus on that as well 
is also kind of unhealthy. So I think maybe finding, you know, your support system, um, having a good support system around you will help you accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Um, your friends, have make sure your friends are in a similar mindset to you. Surround yourself with good people. Um, I would say, even though you're training for a certain sport and you're focused on that sport at all times, also have another hobby. Because I think sometimes you can get too involved um, and it's really hard to pull yourself out of the negativity if you can't accomplish something. So maybe find something else. Like for me, it was, you know what? I'm too focused on this. I need to go for a dog and just like clear my mind. I need to go do some yoga or something to clear my mind just so I can get back to my goals with a fresh mindset. Um, also like having friends to talk to. Um, you know, you gotta have an outlet to do better at what you're focused on, if that makes sense. <laughs> Wow, that's a great answer. We can use that in all of aspects of our lives, not just in sports. Uh, that was a really good answer. Thank you for that. Um, so a couple of my next questions are about uh, you being the first Native American woman and how your Native culture played in that in that role. So uh, my first question is just how has your culture as a Native woman played, uh, played a role and how has it made you, uh, I won't say unique, but more... Uh, different than other people are in that sport that you're in? Um, growing up as Native, you know, I just remember my mom, my mom and dad were separated when I was very young. So my mom always tried to um, teach me about my heritage. She would, we lived in Michigan, so she would take me to the local um, powwows. And I just remember being there and wanting to dance to the drums. <laughs> I would like want to take the shawl and just go copy everybody and just try to be a part of it. Um, you know, learning through those things about my heritage, the Creek Indians. Um, I think almost like I feel like being a minority helped me be more determined per se, you know, I didn't grow up with a lot, but I grew up with, with a lot of nourishment and kindness from the people around me. Um, it helped push me to become a better person. It helped um, make me have drive. It helped me want to be successful in life. Um, it helped me want to be, um, support my future family, to have means to do that. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. I didn't have a lot of money growing up. We lived in like a one bedroom apartment. You know, sometimes I had a mattress on the floor to sleep on. You know, my mom was trying to pay for skating. So that's what we had. That's what we had to survive on. You know, I took those life lessons and turned them into something positive. And I hope that, you know, people can see the future. If you work hard, if you have drive, um, I feel proud to be Native American. I feel like, you know, that pushed me to become a very strong person. So I'm very thankful for my family and everyone who supported me in all this. Yeah, thank you. That having that drive and having that resiliency as a native person is very, very big in a lot of a lot of stuff that we do. So I'm glad you had to were able to talk about that. And then uh a follow-up from one of our other mentors, Charlie, he was asking uh if you have, are doing any kind of work in native communities or what are you kind of doing to give back? Just because I, we believe like the sports that you're doing could be really, really, just all sports in general, but the sports that you're doing could be really, really big, have an impact on native uh, life. So wondering if you're doing anything with that stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking into and have started a Native American skating foundation. So I'm going to try to work with U.S. Figure Skating to put all this together. It's kind of a, a new recent thing, um, but I really feel like activity and, um, you know, I feel like we all struggle with obesity a little bit in, in the communities. And if you can get people active and maybe skating um, just to help that with being uh, healthier people in general. And we get into a sport and it just kind of 
helps you become a better person all around because you focus on positive things, you focus on activity. Um, so yes, I'm trying if anybody wants to come help me. <laughs> also, I'm open for help. Um, I'm open to speaking to like we're doing now, you know, telling my story uh, to more people if I can, getting out there. Um, before I wasn't a very, um, I didn't like speaking in public very much, so I didn't go out very often. But, you know, as I've grown older, I'm more okay with doing things like that. I feel like I've grown up a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually had a follow up for that. Um, and just to tell you that we at Two Pillars do want to work with you as much as possible. So hopefully we can do that. Great. Uh, so yeah, that's, look that's out for the winter time. <laughs> Sweet. Let's keep in touch for sure. <laughs> yes, definitely. And it helps that we have one of your cousins working with us. So we can, we have the inside track on that. So it works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, my uh, final question, I guess, is just how, uh, how is it like not different being a face of like a native uh the own the first native uh figure skater how is it like uh being that being looked up to by people being a role model to people in the native community how big is that uh played a factor on what you do or how you live your life it's huge um you know i look back and i, I could give some advice to athletes who are you know starting to become elite athletes or being noticed, just remember that there's always children looking to you. Remember that your actions are always being watched by the little kids who want to be like you. So I would say, make sure that you're setting a good example. So for me, um, you know, all the people that I watched growing up, I learned from them. So I took that and instilled it in my career. So now I try to be the best example I can be, um, whether it's nutrition wise, speaking about that, or whether, you know, um, helping, always being available, like we were talking about, um, trying to be the best mentor I can be towards other children, um, and just that they're always watching. They're always looking towards you well, what is she going to, she going to do something or how is she going to react to that situation? You know? So you always have to have to remember that, I think. I agree with that. And I think, um, I, it's hard with just like what's going on again with, um, I keep going, I just keep I don't, my mind sidetracked with COVID too and everything that's going on. I live with my grandmother too and youth and everything. And I just keep thinking, how can we get these youth, the native youth out there to do things? So I think this is a really good connection in the sense too, because ice skating isn't something that you can go out and do kind of relatively anywhere. You also have to have a rink. It's, and I think that's where the expenses come in. So thank you for that um, outreach too. I think that is a, um, Good connection there and i think um my next question it's kind of a fun one um <laughs> i just think i wanted to know what did it feel like kind of having your friends and your family being able to watch you on national television when you were competing in the olympics like being able to finally know like people are watching my success and i've made it this far kind of, i just wanted to hear your side from that oh gosh um, well, obviously super supportive, um, to have family and friends be able to watch me on TV. Um, just to, to know that I actually made it that far. I've accomplished my goal that I started out as, as an eight year old little girl watching the Smurfs on ice, you know what I mean? Um, so it's an amazing feeling, not only to have your, your, your family and friends watch you on TV and support you, but you know, I got to perform at the Olympics that was in the United States. So I had the whole crowd surrounding me as well and supporting me. And it was right after 9-11 happened as well. So it was this big sense of like patriotism, you know? So anytime you're like representing the United States of America, did the crowd would just go crazy for us. Or if you were walking in like the Olympic Village, you know, people would just be so supportive of their American athletes. So. Um, I just felt so much support from everybody around me at that point in time. 
um, not only family and friends. I'm thankful for my country, um, my federation, you know, anybody who's helped me along the way. It was just an awesome experience. I'm sure so many of your coaches and different people too, and just people you've met along the way, I'm sure you met awesome people too, which is probably fun. Um, I think I will go ahead and um, lead into my next, for Evelyn, I think you have the next question actually. Oop, I think you're muted. <laughs> How important is training in sports? I need myself. Okay. Um, training in sports, I think, is very important. Um, you Oop, you went back to mute, Naomi. <laughs> Unmute. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I think you, you can't be in sports if you don't train. So you have to have that muscle memory and reaction to certain things that you're doing. So if you're not training every day or, you know, doing your repetitions of what you're supposed to be doing, going to the gym and strengthening your muscles to be able to do the moves that you need to do, whatever sport it is, um, you know, it, you have to train. It's, it's just super important to make yourself strong enough to be able to accomplish what you want to do. So yes, train. <laughs> and this is kind of a follow-up question. Um, how did you kind of keep the training? I think a lot of people, at least for me when I was young and a youth athlete, I would always, sometimes you push yourself to a point where you're really tired and you know it. And so how did you kind of keep those levels with your training and know when you're doing too much? Ooh. That, I think that's a really hard thing for a lot of elite athletes is to push yourself too hard because then you get injured. Um, I've learned from that to listen to your body a little bit more. So if you are pushing yourself, um, you know when to stop, basically. Um, I think if you surround yourself with your trainers and people who are knowledgeable in this, they can also say, hey, you know what? You're super tired. You're just going to injure yourself. As, as an elite athlete, you want to push yourself to like, you're just laying on the floor. You're so tired because you want to be better than everybody else. Um, so I think just listening to yourself, to your body, to your muscles and trusting yourself and knowing when to stop is really important. And that's, that's really hard to accomplish sometimes. Thank you for that. Cause I think it's, I definitely know too. I think you learn when your body's enough. And sometimes I would even push myself farther than that when I, I want to train trainer. You see other athletes that can push themselves farther or doing better, I think. So that's something I think that's really important for any athlete at any age to kind of consider because you can even be bumped up if you're better or right. you know, from JV to varsity. And so that was something that I experienced later on in high school too, where I was like, should I how much should I be training or doing that? And you just got to remember everybody's in their own little level. So thank you for that. Exactly. Yeah. You, you choose from like pushing yourself too hard. So you can't work out the next day or train the next day, or, you know what, back off a little bit today and do a little more tomorrow when you're rested. So. Definitely. Thank you. And Jordan, I think you had the next question. What do you enjoy about coaching, mentoring youth who are competitive ice skating? Oh, man, there's so many things. Um, I love teaching my students how to skate. I love being a role model towards them. I love that I have the experience to share with them about being an elite athlete. Um, I love that I feel like all my students are my family. <laughs> you know, I try to really be there for them. Um, you know, even if my students go away to college or decide to train in a different training center, I always feel like I try to make where we started training home base so they can always come home if they need to. Um, I love teaching someone a new skill and seeing them accomplish their goals. Uh, you know, that makes me feel like I'm helping people in their lives. And, you know, 
uh, there was this one quote, if you, what was it? Oh, wish I could remember it. It was like, basically, if you love your students so much that you're pushing them to the next level and in the future, they're going to know you you love them, even though they don't like you at that moment in time. <laughs> but it's, it's that, you know, you find the balance of pushing your student and also being a friend and a mentor at the same time. But I think a lot of coaches struggle with that. Just like, you know what, you have to do this. You need to do that. You, sometimes you have to be there for them as well, almost like a psychologist to help them along the way. So I just, yeah, I feel like all my students are like, my children and I treat them like that so all, they all have their little individual plans and it, it's fun to see them accomplish their goals I think Jordan had another uh, follow-up question I believe oh, oh what do you think like the main muscle groups you should be training just in general for all sports oh okay I would say I would say your core strength is super important. Um, if you have a strong core, you also have strong balance. Um, you're strong with your coordination. Um, so I would say for me, I don't know about all the other sports, but for, for figure skating, um, it's super important to have a very strong core. So we have our posture, you know, we're not wiggling around, you wiggle around on your blades and you're gonna fall over. So um, <laughs> you have to make sure that you're super, super strong in your core. Obviously your legs as well, but that kind of comes with skating. So extra stuff for core. That's a good question, Jordan. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> and uh, Evelyn, I just wanted to check in if you had any um, other questions you wanted to ask, uh, this is your time if you have any more. <laughs> You're on mute, but no, just any other ones that might've popped in your head if you have any more. No, she's all good. I think I have one more from Kiyoki. Um, it kind of, he's one of our youth mentors. It kind of ties in, you talk about it a little bit, but he just wanted to know, um, being the first Native uh, woman Olympian, has it been difficult? And um, did how did you get through those challenges if they were it was difficult being the first Native woman? Oh. You're on mute again. <laughs> um, getting to the point of of the Olympics is that what he means? Okay, yeah. I mean, I had. We had a lot of challenges. Like I said, like my mom was a single parent trying to get me through one of the most expensive sports. Um, so being, it, it was very hard growing up and I had to have a lot of self-motivation. I think that's super important for, for athletes nowadays to have self-motivation and it's very hard to find sometimes. <laughs> um, once you find that athlete who does have self-motivation, it's like you win the lottery, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, it was extremely hard. Um, you know, I did, I witnessed a lot of poverty um, and that was very sad to see. So, you know, with the Native American Skating Foundation I'm trying to put together, you know, I'd really like to, to have an outlet for youth right now to just be able to skate. You know what I mean? And not really have to worry about the expense of it at this point in time. Um, try to provide that activity. Because um, I have struggled. I'm not it's just, you know, we all struggle, but I have struggled. I did struggle to get where I am today. So I think in the future, I really can help people. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's a really, really good answer to that question. Um, so kind of the last questions as we're kind of like uh, ending this thing, I kind of want to ask uh, do you have any like motivation toward maybe Jordan or Evelyn who have started playing a different sport, but still want to use what you're bringing to, uh, to their sport. If uh, that makes sense. Yes. Um, I would say one of my most favorite quotes is whether you think you can or you think you can't write <laughs> so 
you know, I always think, you know, I'm going into this really hard move or maybe it's for basketball and you're like, you know what? I just can't do this. You're already putting yourself in the negativity. So you have to be able to say, you know what? I can do this. And if I fail at it, I'm going to do it again because I can do this. I think that was really important for me to have that I can aspect for my training instead of, you know what? I can't. No, you can do it. If you put your mind to it, you can do anything. And it's super important. In figure skating, the same as everything else. You know, we fall nine times on a jump, but the 10th time you stood up and you landed it because you learned from those nine times of falling. So again, I think it's, it's the, I can do this attitude in sports that gets you far. Yeah, that's, thank you for the answer. And the practicing, 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 I know also feels really, really well in that, no, no matter what sport you're doing. Mm -hmm. um so as we're uh kind of wrapping up again uh i want to say thank you to you and i want to say thank you to uh jordan evelyn but uh i want to make sure anybody else has any other questions amada evelyn jordan you guys good you have any other questions for naomi before we start before we stop um yes is your like so you know how you do figure skating is that harder or is like uh, like is it like outside? Man. So which, like, is it harder to, is Are you it talking harder? about the genres of figure skating? Like the four different disciplines? Well, like, is it, like, you know how people say, like, you have two lives, kind of, like you have your figure skating, like your outside life, kind of, and then your inside life? Which one's mm -hmm. harder? Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh. She's got me stumped. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Okay, so training, like training, the training aspect of my life was very hard, you know, physically, mentally. Um, <laughs> I would say the personal aspect of my life is also really hard mentally and physically sometimes. So they're, they're a little bit alike as I'm chasing my five children around and trying to schedule their days. And it's just switched focus a little bit, um, which is harder. I would say I enjoy scheduling for my children. I enjoy being around my children. I feel like training for the Olympics might've been a little bit harder. <laughs> Thank you, Evelyn, for that question. I think you stumped me because I was like, how would I answer? <laughs> that? So that was a really good question. Um, and uh, I'll throw it back to Chris, but I just want to thank you personally, Naomi. Thank you for coming on and just sharing your kind of insight to what you've gone through and just being there as like a role model for athletes out there now. So thank you. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for having me. I had so much fun. I enjoyed meeting Evelyn and Jordan and Amada, it was nice talking to you and Chris. It's been so fun. It's nice to meet everybody and get a little outlet to the Native youth finally. So this has been super cool for me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for being on with us. And Evelyn, Jordan, thanks for asking those hard-hitting questions. You guys make me think my, uh, my question a little bit. Those are, those are really, really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that is it for for this week for our youth engagement series. Make sure you guys check us out. Um, we are actually having a panel of uh, local native coaches on Friday with me and uh, Kiyoki, who you heard from a little bit today. So please make sure you guys check that out. And uh, we will be back next week for more stuff for you. Uh, oh, we have an audience question. I'm sorry, I, I got too, too excited. Amada, you have oh. an audience question for us? I just felt like they were the real deal because they, they were saying some stuff. So I was like, I don't want to pass this up. But um, Susan asked a few questions. She was saying, it looks like she's into fig, um, skating actually. So she's all, what skaters are you excited about these days? Um, and how do you encourage your students who are fearful about trying new skills? I tried to learn a two foot spins for a long time. <laughs> um. Oh goodness. I am so excited about the, the way figure skating is going right now, I feel like it's becoming so athletic. Like, you know, we have 14 year old girls doing quad jumps. I, I find it quite incredible how 
the Russian community can train their athletes at such, such a young age to be able to do that. Um, you know, having traveled to Russia and seen how they train because my skating partner is Russian, um, we did a lot of shows out there. I got to actually see how they train their younger children. So that was super cool for me. Um, I'm very excited to see Russian pairs. Um, I'm just excited to see figure skating on TV again, <laughs> in general, <laughs> um, it just to be happening. Uh, as far as teaching younger students or students how to do new things, I would say it's a big hint. If you're afraid to fall, we do have things called butt pads. <laughs> so get some butt pads and then you won't be afraid to fall anymore if you do fall because it won't hurt. It's like, unfortunately, we're not hockey players. We don't get to wear full-fledged, you know, hockey gear if we run into something. We literally fall and it hurts. So we, you know, I would say suit up if you're trying something new. Don't be afraid to wear your butt pads or your elbow pads. Um, just in case you do fall and then you'll learn it without fear and be able to do it in the future. So that's my advice. <laughs> nice. I'm going to go, I'm going to go and buy a bunch of butt pads and probably a hazmat suit to make sure I'm okay now and not falling when I do this. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. And that was a great question, Susan, to end us off. Um, so for, for two feathers, for everybody on here, thank you very much, Naomi. Uh, and everybody watching, thank you for watching. Thank you for all your hard-hitting questions. Uh, that is it for us. We will see you guys hopefully Friday. If not, we'll see you next week. So uh, everybody say bye. Bye, guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.